In this video, we are going to look at the top five new features that came out in Excel in 2024. At number five, we have Focus Cell. Now, have you ever found yourself wondering where you are in a spreadsheet? And if not, you might be thinking, well, Alan, the name box always tells me where I am. And that is correct, but it's not very visual. But now, if you click on your View tab, there is a Focus Cell button. And if I turn that on, we get this highlighted column and row visually telling me exactly where I am, my active cell. Now, the default color is green, but from the drop down list, you can specify a different color. So I could change this to a darker blue which is probably my favorite. And as I click around, I get a highlighted column and row for where I am. If I select a range of cells, it will just highlight that intersection of the active cell. Now, another really cool feature of the focus cell is that it works when you use features like find and replace. So for example, if I was going to select column A, and do control F to trigger a find. And within here, I could search for ID 20101. And when I click on find next, it takes me to that ID and has highlighted the row. So that is a really nice touch. And if I select a column with duplicates and search for something such as soup and find next, it's just highlighting the first instance of what I'm finding. So as I click find next each time, I can see that the active cell was naturally changing and the focus cell feature is highlighting the entire row of the found item. So if I close this window, I can toggle focus cell off and on at any point I wish. And it's a nice addition to solve that common question of where am I? There have been various improvements to the way that Excel integrates with other applications within the Microsoft ecosystem. These include further integration with Python, the ability to create and sync forms directly in Excel. I can get to that by clicking my inserts tab. We have improved connectivity to data on the web. We have suggested tables and getting data from web from examples. But at number four, I'd like to mention that we can bring data from Power BI into Excel as a table in Excel online. And this is a great example of this cross-platform and integration within the Excel product. Now, being that I teach a lot of Power BI, a common question, quite frustratingly sometimes, is how do I get this data in Excel and will it update when I refresh my Power BI data set? And the answer is obviously yes. And this is great for people who want to do this flexible ad hoc analysis that Excel is renowned for. So how do we do this? Well, in Excel online, we can do it in desktop too, but that is not so new. We can click on data and data from Power BI. This will open up on the right hand side with different data sets that you have access to. And right now I can click on the insert table option for this sales report. From here, if I expand these options, I can start picking any columns and any measures that I want from this data set. So for a quick example, I could bring in the product column and then Maybe I'll bring in category and I'll grab a measure from my sales table for total revenue. And that will do for this example, keeping it brief. I can reorder the columns in the build section so I can drag product below category and I can even set filters within this filters area if I wish. I can set some basic filters or even do some advanced filtering. For now, let me just proceed and insert this as is. If I click on insert table, in it comes, and I've now got this data in a table in Excel, 
This is connected to my Power BI semantic model in the service. So any refreshes there will sync to this spreadsheet here and I can start performing more kind of ad hoc calculations and generate tabular reports for people. At number three, we have the group by and pivot by functions. Now these functions will enable you to create summary tables and pivot table style reports from a single formula. Let's have a look at a couple of quick examples. So we have this data here in a table named TBL cells and let's produce some reports. So using the group by function in a quick example, it takes a lot of arguments. So don't be intimidated by the amount of questions being asked here. For a simple example, I can provide the row fields saying that that is from TBL sales and I'll use the category column. Then for the values, that will be TBL sales and I'll use the total column. So if you're familiar with pivot tables, terms such as rows and values will be very familiar to you. Now I then need to provide the function and you can see that it has a lot to offer. So I'll just use a typical sum for now, but what might stand out are options like median, percent of another new function, array to text and concat as they are not available natively within a pivot table. But I'll just choose sum for now, and I'm gonna run this function as is, and this will produce a nice summary report from a single formula. How easy and how awesome was that? Now to take it a step further, maybe I want to filter it by a country stated in cell C2, and maybe I want to order it descend in order by the second column, which is the total column. Coming back to the formula, and on the end, if I put in a comma, it asks me if I want field headers, I'm going to ignore this, asks me about subtotals, I've only got one row label, so no worries there. Sort order. Now, negative two means to go descending by the second column. And we're not gonna go into detail on this here because this is not a tutorial on these functions, just a quick example, but that is descending by the total column. And then for the filter, I can set a filter that TBL sales, country column, must be equal to the value of C2. And if I run this now, I've got it descending by the second column and a nice drop down list to filter those reports. So a pivot table style report from a single formula and many options to customize that, including bringing in some, some powerful filtering capacity. Now with pivots by, the main difference here is that we'll be able to use two axes. So very much your pivot table style report. If I start my pivot by, the row values is going to be my category column again, but now I can provide a column field as well. You don't have to. I could utilize this similar to group by, but let's take advantage of that. That is what I'm using pivot by for. And I'm gonna choose my year column. And then the values will be the total again. And then let's skip some of these questions after I tell it to do a sum. But please note again that many other functions are available to us. And if I scroll down this list to show you the full lot, it can even handle lambdas. So if you have been building your own custom lambda functions, we can run these within pivot by as well and group by. I'll put a link in the description of this video about Lambda functions if you're new to them. For now though, let's just go for sum and I won't worry about any of the other options such as the filtering and the sorting. Let's just close this off and run it. And a second quick example there of the brilliance of these new functions to Excel. I've created this pivot table style report from just one formula.
At number two, we have checkboxes. I love this update to Excel. I think Microsoft have done a brilliant job with the checkboxes, huge improvement over what we had before, and they're really easy to use. So let's imagine I'm creating a quick to-do list here. For checkboxes, I simply select my range and click on insert checkbox. It is as simple as that. I can even format them and really they are just a formatted value. So if I just change the color of the font, I really am changing the color of that checkbox. It's just checkbox rather than the word false. I'll go for this dark one. And if I check these boxes, we'll see it says true in the formula bar as I check each item. And we can run really cool things off the back of this, whether they be conditional formatting rules or a formula. So for example, I could create a quick tally of how many tasks I'm completing here by running the sum function on these checkboxes. I'll stick in a plus zero here to convert my true false values into ones and zeros. Then the sum will just sum the ones. And off the back of that, I could concatenate onto it a slash. And off the back of that, just return how many items in the to-do list there are. And this will give me a nice little tally. So now as a check boxes, it tells me how many I'm completing. And it's just a quick example of how easy it is to start producing an analysis or some visualization off of a selected checkbox. There's loads of really cool ways that we can use these checkboxes. And I've started doing some different videos on these already at the channel. Here I've got a nice chart with some checkboxes to pick and choose which data series are actually shown on the line chart. This is an example which comes straight out of my advanced Excel success book. And at number one, it had to be Copilot. Nothing is quite changing the way we work like AI at the moment. And Microsoft with their own Copilot tool built into Excel has overseen an abundance of change across the year of 2024. One of the more recent updates is that your data does not need to be in a table, which was a requirement just a few months ago. So this data on screen at the moment is not in a table, but I do have my active cell within it. So from the home tab, if I click on Copilot over on the right, it happily opens up and allows me to start to use it. Whereas previously it would moan that your data needs to be in that table first. And I can chat to it to get responses to general questions, just like you would use maybe Google or YouTube for. But for a couple of quick examples, let's see it write a formula and then we'll see it analyze some data quickly. Now you can see I've got some country names in column B. And in this table named TBL country data, I have the three digit code for a list of countries. Now I want to get the corresponding country code for the countries listed in my other table, this one here. And I need a formula to help me do that. So over in Copilot, I'm providing the following prompt, create a formula to show the three character country code for each country. I've got this information in a table named TBL country data. So I've quite a straight to the point prompt for what I need done. If I send this in, and here we go. How amazing is that? It looks at my data, returns an XLOOKUP function, provides an explanation for it and a preview of results, and then the button to insert the column. So if I oblige by clicking that button, here I have the country codes to match the countries in my data set. I can go and move and rearrange these columns now if I wish and just put that where I'd like it. And maybe what I now want to do is produce a quick report to show the sum of the revenue, the total revenue for each continent of this data set. 
And right now you might be eagerly wanting to write a group by function to do that. But I'm going to ask Copilot. So here's my prompt, create a report to show the total revenue for each continent. As simple as that. So here we go, it has analyzed my data and produced a pivot chart. It's even ordered it in descending order, provided a little summary below and a button to add it to a new sheet. So if I click my button, here we go. I've got my pivot table and pivot chart produced from a really straight to the point question for Copilot. Just a couple of examples of how much Copilot has grown and what it is capable of in Excel. And outside the scope of this video, Copilot is in the entire Microsoft suite, not just Excel, although this is our focus for now. So they were my top five updates in Excel for 2024. What is your favorite update? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe it's not one that I mentioned. Feel free to put your case forward. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. It really helps. And you can subscribe to this channel to be sure to kept up to date as new videos are released. Thank you for your time. Take care. Bye for now.